as you heard Ed mentioned there, the stock's been doing fairly well. Uh, Rocket Lab is rivaling Elon Musk and SpaceX in the business that you're in. Is there enough demand to really be a significant competitor to SpaceX? Yeah, look, I mean, the space industry is, is growing. Um, and th there's no doubt that if, if you look at, you know, the, the satellites and the programs that are scheduled to occur over the next decade, you know, space is going to become a one or a two trillion dollar industry, depending on whose numbers you wish to believe. And, uh, you know, what, what we're doing is keeping our head down and working hard and making sure that, um, in, in, you know, to be able to supply all of the things that need to be supplied um, to, to let that market grow to the scale that it needs to grow to. You've won a lot of contracts from U.S. government agencies, but what about a longer list of private companies where SpaceX seems to dominate? Yeah, look, I mean, our, our launch manifest is, is pretty much 50% commercial, 50% government. Um, and as you mentioned, we've flown about all the government agencies from the NRO to, to NASA and all the, the, you know, the commercial companies from, uh, from little startups through to more mature startups like Planet and then right through to, you know, the large blue, blue chip defense contractors. So, you know, we, we've had a, a fairly good run across um, both, both commercial and government. Now, the mission that really got you started was bringing down the cost of a rocket launch, which you have done. You know, rockets are still mm. expensive endeavors. And how much further do you see that cost being brought down? Yeah, well, there's a couple of elements there is, you know, what we created was the first small dedicated launch vehicle where customers with small satellites can get on orbit in an a, a affordable time um, and in a, in, a, in a quick time frame. And you know, as, as we've continued to grow the business, you know, now we do a lot within our space systems group. We have missions to the moon, missions to Mars, for NASA. Um, and then the next big milestone for us is our neutron launch vehicle, which is, which is really you know, a significantly large, uh, larger vehicle uh, designed to uh, really create a competitive environment in that medium to large you know, launch um, sector. So where do you see most of the growth taking place across the industry and for Rocket Lab itself? Across the industry, uh, definitely me mega constellations. These are constellations putting up really critical infrastructure that, um, that, that we're all going to use in the future and, and we all use now. Uh, and then, you know, with, within, within Rocket Lab itself, um, we like having a diversified portfolio of kind of 50% launch and 50% satellites and, and, um, and, and space systems. So that diversification gives us the ability to, you know, have fingers in just about all the pies. So, uh, you know, talk to us then about what comes next, because obviously there's a lot of competition here. There's a whole space economy that's growing. And I'm curious where you see the most vibrant part of that economy in the future. You know, how big a piece of the pie is space tourism, for example? And what about everything else? Yeah, I mean, the space industry is interesting because uh, there's, look, there's a tremendous amount of excitement and ambition. Um, but it's a little bit shy on execution. Uh, if you look at, um, you know, our industry, uh, SpaceX was obviously the first private company to send a satellite into orbit. Rocket Lab was the second, and then you know there's been a couple of others after that. But you know from the launch perspective, there's like a hundred and something launch companies at our last count, but there's only been a few that have actually managed to deliver stuff to space. And that's just fundamentally, you know, you wake up every morning and do better with physics, and it's just it's just super hard. Um, but I think you know the industry where, where the industry is really going is is it's you're, you're witnessing real time the democratization of space. Things that used to be government-only enterprises or government-only programs are really now, you know, turning into commercial programs, and we can do that because the cost of launch has come down, the cost of building satellites has come down, and you can actually, you know, build real infrastructure and provide real commerce in space. So let's say a decade from now, or maybe it's two decades from now, uh, depending on you know where we see the most dramatic changes. What does the space industry look like? Well, I mean, I, I certainly hope uh, it, it looks vastly different from today. I mean, I, I think we're, we're right at the beginning of, of this process of democratization. And, you know, I, I kind of liken it to like, when, when we first you know, sent the very first email, um, that, that's kind of where I feel like we, we, where we really are. So I think there's a tremendous amount of growth, there's a tremendous amount of opportunity, um, and, uh, and we're certainly, you know, making sure that we position ourselves to, to, to catch, that, catch that wave, that's for sure.